So, folks, one of the things we've often spoken about, and it's incredibly frustrating, of course, is that when it comes to old Donnie improving his criminality, you can't just find evidence that laws were broken by he and his staff, his lawyers, his cronies, all of that. Because they're rich, wealthy, well-connected people, you also have to prove that they knowingly did something wrong, that they knowingly tried to pull off schemes that were unconstitutional and illegal, and that the claims they were making to justify these unconstitutional schemes were knowingly wrong. That they didn't really have a good faith feeling in their heart or their mind or whatever that what they were doing was accurate and constitutional. And what just dropped today from the center of Trump world, from his airplane, from a new raid into the inner sanctum of Donald Trump's world, is everything because we have information from Trump staffers both on the campaign side and in the in the White House side that changes everything guys and demonstrates the true nature of Trump's plans but also how those plans were foiled and what that says this is evidence that I know has made Jack Smith and maybe other investigators as well very happy going into the weekend listen to this some intriguing new details now to add to the ongoing investigation into former President Donald Trump and 2020 election interference in the state of Georgia. For the first time, we're now seeing text messages between operatives working with Trump's legal team. In those texts, they're trying to figure out what to do with data from a breached voting machine and if they should or could use that information to try to decertify Georgia's Senate runoff back in 2021. There's a lot to sort out here. CNN's Zach Cohen and Sarah Mari join us with this new reporting. Zach, just walk us through what you've learned and where it fits. Hey John, these are two guys that we know were working directly with Trump's legal team, including people like Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani. And they were really tasked with finding evidence of voter fraud, right, that could be used in lawsuits, that could be used to sort of discredit the presidential results. But we're learning for the first time now that after January 6th, after you know, everything that happened that day, that hunt continued and they did successfully get access to data from a voting machine in Coffee County. And these texts two weeks after the breach happened show you for the first time what they were planning to do with it. Um, they were looking, you know, it's very clear here. One text says, here's the plan. Let's keep, keep this close hold for now. We only have until Saturday to um, decide if we're going to use this report to try to decertify the Senate runoff or if we hold it for a bigger moment later. Now they're talking about the Senate runoff in Georgia, obviously the one that David Perdue, the Republican, lost, and it was won by Senator John Ossoff. But um, for the first time, we're getting a window into how people that were working for Trump um, in the lead up to the, or in the aftermath of the 2020 election kept um, trying to do the same stuff after weeks after. So they keep going, even after January 6th. This is a conservative county, mm -hmm. and this is part of a big, we always talk about the investigation by the DA in Fulton County right. as about the 2020 presidential race, but it's bigger than that. It is bigger than that. I think what the DA is looking at there is really election interference, and, and this is part of it. You know, we know that she has information about not only the attempts to breach these voting machines in Coffee County, but also the attempts to try to use these to undermine or to to try to undermine the Senate runoff results. Explains why Team Trump would go on to lose 61 times in court, judge after judge after judge in courts all across the country. Some of those judges appointed by Donald Trump himself, as well as the United States Supreme Court, dismissed Trump's claims of fraud and his attempts to overturn the 2020 election through the courts. And they lost because, as they very well knew, as Ted Cruz knew, there wasn't any evidence of fraud. Recall what former Arizona House Speaker Rusty Bowers testified to before the January 6th Select Committee about a phone call meeting he had with Rudy Giuliani. At some point, did uh, one of them uh, make a comment that uh, they didn't have evidence, but they had a lot of theories? That was Mr. Giuliani. And, and what exactly did he say and how that come up? My recollection, he said, we've got lots of theories, we just don't have the evidence. And I don't know if that was a gaffe or maybe he, he didn't think through what he said, but both myself and others in my group, the three in my group and my, my counsel, both remembered that specifically and afterwards we kind of laughed about it. I guess it could be funny, but the harm it's done is undeniable, right? There was never any evidence, the lack of quote, actual facts and specific evidence, as Ted Cruz and Rusty Bowers put it. As Ted Cruz puts it during a phone call on November 7th with Maria Bartiromo. But then it doesn't stop him 
from working as a senator to overturn the election result. Here he is on January 6th. Even though he knows there's no evidence objecting to the certification of President Joe Biden's Electoral College win. Watch. I want to speak to the Republicans who are considering voting against these objections. I understand your concerns, but I urge you to pause and think. What does it say to the nearly half the country that believes this election was rigged if we vote not even to consider the claims of illegality and fraud in this election? What Cruz and what Fox still can't grasp is that half the country believed that because they were lied to by people like Ted Cruz and Fox News. Cruz, unsurprisingly, did not respond to a request for comment from MSNBC. And today there's more. We have more evidence today showing that members of Trump teams, team Trump, easy for me to say, had their own doubts about whether the people who claim to have the goods about election fraud actually ever had any of the goods about election fraud. In an audio recording that is exclusive to Deadline White House, former Trump administration official Peter Navarro, who played an integral role in peddling election fraud claims, expresses his own doubts about attorney Sidney Powell's claims and her credibility. Here he is talking to Abby Grossberg more than two weeks after the January 6th insurrection. Listen. Sidney Powell, she sends me stuff by mistake. There's an Abby in her office. <laughs> There's an Abby in her office. And this whole, through the whole Flynn trial, she sends me stuff and then she frantically calls or emails me saying, please delete it, it's confidential. <laughs> yeah, that horse is out of the barn, right? Oh, so she mistakenly like sent me something on Signal on that phone. I'm like, I, I wonder what that is, but I'm not going to open it because I don't want it to be evidence. And then comes like the call two minutes later, please delete it. I, that wasn't intended for you. Well, you have no idea how much damage she did to uh, to our efforts. <laughs> she really, she, she really, I'm telling you, Abby, the history was written on this. She was like the turning point in, in our inability to prove the case because she was like so far out there that people like pulled back. We were on the verge of some breakthroughs in the states and state legislature level. And then that happened and it was like Katie bar the door. It's like, damn, damn, just not good. Now, interestingly, in a statement to MSNBC, when he learned we were going to play this tape, Peter Navarro didn't walk away from any of it. In fact, he doubled down on the statements he made about Sidney Powell, saying this, quote, Sidney Powell is basically the worst thing that ever happened to the election integrity issue. As always, I'm being candid with Abby Grossberg, just as I am being candid with the American people. Internal doubts about the veracity of their fraud claims by senior Trump allies about whether there was any, any, ever any evidence of election fraud revealed in new audio recordings. As so you can see it really sets up. You have them literally saying this is the plan and the plan, guys, is is, is bonkers. And then you have another one where they basically admit that they were going to pull off a wide scale unconstitutional scheme and apparently had broad buy in, if not for the fact that the Trump lawyers that they put on the public were so dumb that it ruined the scheme. And whether or not that's true, whether or not Navarro actually did have that support, he could just be blustery. He's known for that. The point is, what they're saying is, is that our, our evil scheme, which we've already established, is not based on fact, is not based on reality is not based on a good faith reading of the constitution or other federal laws or or applicable state law but is based on we want Donald Trump to stay in power and so we're going to create these alternative schemes whether it's seizing voting machines or whether it's fake electors or whether it's Mike Pence can do this or that or whether it's we're going to object and then get all the states to just go along with it and basically spit on the will of tens of millions of American voters, at least in all the relevant swing states that Trump lost. So, you know, five, six, seven states, whatever it was, we're going to do all of that and justify it. And the thing that ruined our scheme was one of the lawyers going out there and being too mask off. And that's not a sign that it was ruined because, 
you know, there, there was some sort of political fallout. It was ruined because the scheme was exposed for being not based in fact, but based in pure fascist partisanship. And this is information that we've never seen before. This is the info that you could only find in the Trump era in like three places because Donald Trump was notorious for not writing things down. And his staff for a long time was seemingly able to hide these things. You could find it in Mar-a-Lago. You could find it in the Oval Office, and you could find it on Trump's airplane, his personal airplane, or on Air Force One, where he'd have his most candid of candid conversations with his narrowest circle of either campaign people or White House people or both. And we just got a look into the inner sanctum tonight. The schemes were always there. They were always based on lies. They were always unconstitutional. And therefore, they were always criminal. 